Hakima, Keisha, and Pam made up the hit 90s group Total. Backed by Bad Boy Records, they cranked out some of the hottest R&B songs despite criticism from their haters. In a 1996 article by the New York Daily News, it was reported that the group was bashed for their image and their vocal abilities. However, they didn't let that stop them from racking up numerous platinum and gold hits. But after only two studio albums, they faded away. Don't forget, you can gain access to this audio and one unreleased super messy video per month on the Real Reality Gossip Patreon. Details are down below in the description box. Now let's get into what really happened to Total. Kima Rayner and Keisha Spivy were riding in a car in Plainfield, New Jersey when Kima began singing a Mariah Carey song. Kima told Essence Magazine that Keisha was impressed and she suggested they form a girl group. Kima said, so she saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. They began working with a local producer and he wanted to introduce them to another singer who had a really dope sound. That singer turned out to be Pam Long. Pam wasn't completely convinced that Kima and Keisha were the right fit for her because she wanted to be a solo artist. She also thought Kima was a little too bougie for her. Pam eventually got over her issues. She called them up the next day and said, let's do it. They came up with the name Total Opposite to describe how different they were from one another. They began creating music and a woman named Kathy Dukes took notice of their hustle and wanted to be their manager. A year later, Kathy arranged for them to meet her son's godfather, bad boy founder Sean Puff Daddy Combs. According to Ebony, they met up with Puffy at the Hit Factory studio in New York and cornered him inside of an elevator. In an interview with Power is Industry, Pam said they sang their hearts out. They were all up in Puffy's face and had him backed up against the wall. Puffy didn't say one word, he didn't crack a smile, and he didn't give any feedback. He just had one question. If y'all ever got into an argument and one disrespected the other, could you still work together? They said that they could, and he thanked them for their time. The girls didn't even think Puffy liked them, but behind the scenes, he was interested. He called their manager and told her, don't take those girls anywhere, I want to sign them. Puffy offered them a contract on Bad Boy Records and called them Total for short. They became one of his first acts, along with rappers The Notorious B.I.G. and Craig Mack. Pam told Ebony that even though they were still really young, they were always up in the club with Puffy as he was making his business moves. When they weren't out on the town, they quote, practically lived at the hit factory. They began singing background for many popular artists and things started to heat up when they laid down vocals for Biggie's song entitled Juicy. Pam wasn't in the studio at the time, so Kima and Keisha made it happen on their own. They also appeared on the hip hop remix of Biggie's song One More Chance. After all the success they had on Biggie songs, it was time for Total to introduce the world to their own material. But first, they had to go through Puffy's grooming process. Pam said the bad boy exec focused on their branding, their image, their hair, and their sound. Despite being total opposites, they perfectly balanced each other out with their femininity, fierceness, and attitudes. Kima told Cryptic Rock she was the laid back and sassy one. Keisha was the seductive and sultry one, while Pam brought the hip hop vibe. Pam later addressed her image in an interview with the New York Daily News. She said, people can't quite figure me out. They don't know whether I'm gay or hardcore or what, and I like that. Can't You See featuring Biggie first appeared on the New Jersey Drive soundtrack before being released as their debut single. It peaked at number 10 on the Billboard charts. <laughs> Their self-titled album was released in 1996 and it produced the singles No One Else and Kissin' You. The album was later certified platinum. They continued to sing background on songs like Loungin' by LL Cool J and What You Want by Mace. They also scored a major hit with the single What About Us from the Soul Food soundtrack. In addition, they reportedly showed other people in the entertainment world that they weren't ones to be played with. In a 1996 article by the New York Daily News, it was reported that Wendy Williams was constantly dissing the group on her radio show. 
Keisha said they popped up at the radio station and sang for her a cappella to prove they had talent. Their impromptu performance quickly changed Wendy's mind. But Wendy had a different version of what took place that day. Decades later, while speaking to the audience at her talk show, Wendy said a certain music mogul sent his all-girl group to beat her in front of the radio station. Wendy said it all happened because she kept saying the girls were broke and living in the projects. Of course, everyone connected the dots and assumed she was talking about Puffy in total. Things took a frightening turn in September 1997 when Pam, Keisha, DeBrat, and a group of their staff members departed an Amtrak train in Union Station. According to the Washington Post, they were walking toward their limo when Pam and Keisha turned on their cassette player and started singing one of their songs. Amtrak policeman William Evans asked them to turn off their tape. The women reportedly hit the stop button but kept on singing, and that's when the officer reportedly stepped in their path and shouted, You are going to jail. According to court docs, one of their staff members tried to intervene and the officer pulled out his mace and started spraying. The suit alleges the officer ordered the women to take off their pants to be searched. The results of the case weren't made public. The group headed back to the studio to work on more music. Unlike their first album, Puffy was less present. According to Ebony, he was spending more time on other projects, so he asked Missy Elliott to step in. Missy told Ebony she was spending up to 22 hours a day in the studio trying to create the best material possible for Total. However, Puffy would allegedly show up and tell Missy how whack she was and that she didn't know anything about music. Missy said, Later we battled over the phone and I just had to hang up on him. Even though Puff was against their new music, Total loved the sound and stuck with it. In 1998, they released their second album entitled Kima, Keisha, and Pam. The first single, Trippin', hit number seven on the Billboard Hot 100. The album was well-received and certified gold. Two more singles, Sitting Home and I Tried, were released, but neither gained enough traction. By this time, the women were trying to navigate through their 20s and doing so in the public eye proved to be difficult. Kima told Essence she learned to look at a record deal as no different than borrowing from a bank. She added, you gotta pay it back. At the end of the day, it's a job. You get out what you put in. Pam told Power is Industry that her inner turmoil started spilling over into everything. She said initially she was hungry and would do anything for money, but after the money started rolling in, she had a change of heart. She began turning down projects and offers. She also found excuses to skip out on studio sessions and cancel shows. Pam said success also affected her personality. They were surrounded by a bunch of yes people, which made things even worse. She added, you start to believe your own hype, and that's what I did. Pam reached her breaking point when her mother told her, I love you, but I don't like you. Pam said that was the moment she knew she had to back away from the group. She also admitted, I wasn't even liking myself, to be honest. And then they began fighting among themselves. When word got back to Puffy that the group was self-imploding, he told them he didn't have time for their cattiness and they needed to decide what they wanted to do. In 1999, the trio decided to part ways. During their hiatus, Kima focused on her family and life with her husband, Carlos Dyson. Keisha married actor Omar Epps, and Pam married Jamie Long of R&B group Pretty Ricky. After years of an anticipated reunion, Pam and Kima performed in London in 2013. According to Ebony, Keisha had other obligations, so she couldn't be part of the performance. However, Pam made it clear they would never replace her. She said, she's still our sister and can return whenever she wants. In 2016, all three members joined the Bad Boy reunion tour. The group explained to Essence they were looking forward to putting out new music. But as of this video, that hasn't happened. Pam told Parlay Magazine the album is in limbo because she has unfinished business to attend to, including her own solo projects. She said, I have to follow the path God has me on. Once I complete what he has placed in my heart to do, afterward, if it's in his plan, a total album will be in the making. As of now, Keisha continues to enjoy life with her husband, her children, and Omar's daughter from a previous relationship. She and Omar celebrated 14 years of marriage in February 2020. Kima became a grandmother in 2017, and in 2018, she released her debut single called Love Me Back.
And as for Pam, she went through a messy divorce with Jamie Long in 2019 after six years of marriage. Pam accused him of adultery. Jamie has since moved on and married author and speaker Centoya Brown. In October 2019, Pam came out with a crazy allegation accusing Jamie of forcing himself on women during the time they were married. She later retracted her accusation and apologized in this video statement. I made a comment about my ex-husband, Jamie Long, and that comment was that he forces himself on women. And right after that, I said, do you remember that night? Um, I was telling the world that my ex-husband forced himself on me, and that was a lie. Jamie, I'm sorry for what it is that I have said about you. I'm sorry for the shame that I have brought to your name, to your family, to you, your wife, your mom, your sister, and those who love you. Pam has been focusing on her solo career as a Christian artist and has released several singles overseas and in the U.S., including the 2019 song entitled Why. Even if that third studio album never happens, Total is still considered one of the best girl groups to hit the scene. They dominated the golden era of R&B music with style, grace, and a sound unlike no other. Let us know if you're surprised by what happened to Total. And thanks for watching Real Reality Gossip.